Does Class D mean digital? Okay. Steve in Sydney, Australia asked this very question. He says, Hi Paul, I'm listening to my hi-fi system through a PS Audio Stellar M700 monoblock pair of amplifiers. Yes, good job, Steven. And it's Class D, as you know. Well, yeah, I do. <laughs> and they sound absolutely amazing. Thanks, Steve. Does this mean that even when I'm playing my turntable, the sound is digitized? Excuse my ignorance. Thank you. Love your videos. Best regards, Steve. Okay. Uh, well, before we get going, and with apologies to Ohm's Law listeners, and I will do my best to explain, I'm outside PS Audio's worldwide headquarters. And you, can, you can't see if you're on Ohm's Law, but you can if you're on the videos. I'm standing in front of a sign that says, For Lease. Yeah, I know. It looks like we're moving. And we are, right across the street. So it's getting close. A few more weeks and we'll start the move over there. Though it will be uh, probably November before the sound rooms are finished, which is unfortunate. It's going to be quite a transition period that I'm not happy about. But hey, you know what? Progress, it's moving, we're grooving, we're doing good. So, okay. Part of the problem is that there's a general misconception that Class D is digital. And I don't want to get tied up in semantics because it isn't digital, not to an engineer, not, that's, I can't think of it as digital. Here's why. Digital, by its very mean, uses digits, right? And, and not to put too fine a point on it, but when we go digital, we're converting rising and falling voltages to a series of numbers. And those numbers can then be stored on an optical disc or a hard drive, and those numbers represent those same levels of voltage. So if I have a voltage that's going from, you know, point A up to point B, and I'm, I've got a sine wave that's going up and down, up and down, I'm going to convert those voltage levels into higher and lower numbers. So if this is the, you know, I'm showing here the top of a sine wave, and I'm drawing with my finger, if that's the top, that's going to be the highest number that I can have. And in a 16-bit in a word, that's a pretty big number. It's like 96,000 or something. So it's a pretty tall number. And then it's, it, it, it's smaller numbers down below. But nonetheless, they are digits. They are numbers. And that is a digital system. There are, well, there are uh, certainly exceptions to that rule, DSD being one of those, that it is clearly a digital system, but that's, that's a whole other subject that we won't go into over there. The numbering system is not used in a Class D amplifier. It uses an analog process that's called pulse width modulation. So what it does is it has on-again, off-again energy. And that's the on-again, off-again at a specific clock frequency is where the term digital comes in for, for PWM, for pulse width modulation for Class D. Because the amplifier inside is nothing more than a switch that's going on or off as opposed to an analog signal where the continuous uh, on again, higher, 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 and low again, lower, 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 is a continuous flow that's closer to analog. So why would we say that, that class D is closer to analog than it is digital? Well, the reason is because we are directly converting an analog voltage the input signal into longer and shorter bursts of energy. And when we, when we do that, we're kind of stacking building blocks, if you will, of energy directly without a numbering system, without digits, directly to the output. So this, while this switch is going on and off, it is doing so in very, very tiny increments or very long increments, which is the wider pulse uh, it, you know, happens 
uh, for a higher signal and then the shorter pulse happens for a shorter signal. So the long and short of it, without getting too babbly about what we're, what we're trying to do, is it really is an analog system. What makes it sort of digital is the fact that it has a clock and that it's using an on-again, off-again switch. So specifically, if you consider that digital, which I don't, then yes, even your turntable is being converted to this form of energy. But in any amplifier, we're converting a turntable signal to a larger signal through a process that uh, it, it either converts current into voltage or voltage into current. Uh, in this case, we're just uh, adding more and more voltage by, by means of turning the switch on longer or on shorter. And when you look at a pulse width signal and the output of it, you can see it, you can see the music. Even though it's kind of chunky, you can see the music. In a digital signal, when you look at that, you can't make heads or tails of it. There is no obvious analog trail that a digital amplifier or a digital DAC make. It, it, it just, it's, a, it's a code. It, doesn't look, it just looks like noise. And, and until you do all these other fancy gyrations, you, you can't then see the analog waveform as you can with pulse width modulation from, from the very output, from the very moment that switch goes on and off. It just does it kind of like a movie. Think of a movie. It's in 24 frames right? So it looks analog and it's certainly not digital, but there's still pictures that come every, you know, 24th of a second. Snap, 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 and kind of the same thing. Just think of a pulse width modulation as these frames and within each frame it's, it's brighter or dimmer uh, and that's what the switch is doing. So it stays on longer, it stays on shorter within a specific frame like in a movie which we wouldn't call digital, nor would we call Class D. So I'm glad you're enjoying your Stellars. They are terrific amplifiers. And one, one quick secret to those, the, the reason that that sounds so good and so analog is the work that we did on the front end. Remember, amplifiers, just like DACs, have a sound to them that is dependent not so much in the case of a power amplifier for its output stage, but its input stage. And with a DAC, it's not so much the DAC, it's the way we do the output stage that really makes the difference in sound. So a couple secrets there for you. All right, I'll talk to you tomorrow. And hey, if you know anybody that wants to lease a building, it's a great building, just give these guys a call. <laughs> All right, talk to you later, bye.